again. I'm trying to fuck. Huh. I don't have to do it anymore that that because <laughs> we have a intro. <laughs> an appropriate intro. But uh, thanks to to Mark Matt my brother, I can't say his last name. Rick, I think it's Mark Rebelle or Rebelle or something like that. Thank you dude for letting us use uh, Girls Club. <laughs> Great song. Fits with the show. <laughs> I don't have to moan. <laughs> It doesn't mess me up. He used to do this thing for some reason. I don't even know how it started. Before every time he would start, he would do a. That's a good welcome. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah, well, was kind of like a little icebreaker. Kind of everybody right away <laughs> like, in a oh, good mood. It's like okay, <laughs> yeah. this, this isn't a serious podcast. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, welcome back to the show. I guess. Um, What's up, guys? We're back <laughs> this week again at Batolas. Thank you to them again for letting us come come on by and do another show from here. Uh, as always, as well, thank you to Old Cheap Old Dog. Dog Brewery for sponsoring us and always hooking us up with some delicious beer every week. Make sure you guys go ahead and check them out at 3900 Rosa Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79905. Exactly. Go there. Make yeah. sure you guys check them out. Support them. Support Old Cheap Dog. Sh- support Batolas. And remember, always support local. Uh, but yeah, we're back again this week with a new episode with some new friends this week. We have Eliana and Nico here with us. Great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. All the way from El Paso, Texas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, shit. From across the city. From, oh, across, right. from across the city. Well, I mean, you said you went to Eastwood, right? So you're on the, are, you, from, are you on the east side? Uh, I live in Central now. Oh, you live I'm, in Central? I'm from the east okay. side, yeah. about Central. Yeah. Central. <laughs> that's, that's the place to be. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys for being here this week. Uh, why don't you go ahead and guess, kind of ex- introduce you guys yourself a little bit. Tell everybody. Okay. I'll go. go. <laughs> yeah. So um, so yeah, we're, we're both artists. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a multimedia artist myself. Um, and we just finished an exhibition. Speaking of old cheap dog, um, in collaboration with them in Galleria Lincoln. Uh, it was a really great success. Uh, we had a great time. Super happy to be working with everybody. Mm-hmm. We're actually drinking from a growler. Uh, that has uh, the design that we made on it for the show, which is super dope, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, it's just good to be involved in the community. Eliana, you want to t- talk a little bit? Yeah, uh, so I'm a, a local artist, a painter and a photographer. Um, and, yeah, just to kind of talk a little bit more about that show, um, the whole, the whole, the exhibit name was Convergence. And the whole reason that we kind of picked that for the name, like the theme of the show was how um, art brings people together and how, uh, it's a way for people who wouldn't normally cross paths or wouldn't normally converge to um, to meet and share something and bond over something. So it was super cool to kind of like see that happen at the show. Um, Nico and I met in an art show, which is one of Nico's earlier shows. So it was cool to kind of see everybody like come and meet at um, uh, just like we met you at our show, right? Yeah. Um, so but <laughs> yeah, to like meet new people and see people kind of bond over that experience. It was super cool. So how did how did it come across for you guys to kind of collaborate on that project together? Uh, well, I mean, so I think we just we've been friends for a couple of years now mm-hmm. and um, we've been doing exhibi- like exhibitions separately and just kind of one day we were throwing around the idea and we we were roll with, like just went with it. You know, mm-hmm. we threw it around and then kind of took it more seriously as time went on. And yeah, we just rolled with it. It just worked out. Yeah. And I think. um you know, I did a number of like solo exhibitions up to this point. They made like seven or something. This is the first one I'd done with a collaboration, but it was really great. Like it was such a, I mean, it was, it's fun doing exhibitions by yourself, but doing it together was like a really fun experience. We were able to kind of work together, spend a lot of time in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been mentioning before we started talking that uh, this show was supposed to be back in March, like maybe about the week the COVID lockdown started. So we were really disappointed that it got, you know, postponed, but it, in the end it was pretty good because we actually spent the past like six months in the studio working on stuff together you know learning new techniques and stuff like that so uh it actually worked out really well for us and you know we, we had like a stronger exhibition because of that so yeah i think the neat thing about collaborations is like you never know what you're gonna pull out of the other person like you uh-huh. never know kind of like how you're gonna push them to like do something new or try something they wouldn't normally try mm-hmm. and i think that's something that worked really well for us is like we're good at saying hey you know what like you you got to get outside your comfort zone. You yeah. got to do something new. You got to try something different. And so that's that's what I like about collaborating. It's like it's a cool way to kind of like push yourself to do something you wouldn't normally do. Yeah, and I think it's cool too cuz I mean it's very easy for me to just kind of get stuck in my head yeah. personally, like I'm a very in my head type person. 
And so I get in the studio and I'm thinking about myself, my own art and whatever. Uh, so I'd like to kind of have somebody to bounce ideas off with is like actually really fun. Like, so even though it's kind of an era where a lot of us are like independent people doing things on our, on our own, yeah. when you, you know, and when you do the collaborations, it's like, that's when I think you have the most fun. How did that work? Cause I mean, obviously you guys being solo artists and doing your own exhibitions on yourself, when you have to kind of start working with someone, like how did you guys actually say, okay, this is the direction we're going or this is good. This is what we need to do. Or when there are times where you were like, yeah, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. Or how did, how did that go? <laughs> I mean, I think it started with like the paintings that we collaborated on. We had like a clear concept of, of okay, this is what we wanted to convey. This mm -hmm. is the idea that we want like out of this. So I think that kind of helped in making sure like we moved in the same direction was having like a clear concept before we even started designing. Um, but I think like our, our styles mesh pretty well. So I don't know. I feel like we kind of we made it work without too much clashing about like, OK, how are we going to do this? But Yeah. And we also kept it to like maybe like there was a few pieces that we decided these are going to be the collaborative pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we talked about those ahead of time and then we'd help each other out with pieces. But those were kind of still independent pieces. So like most of what we did was still our independent stuff. But then we had some stuff that we came together on. And that was the idea of the show. Like on one side of the loft uh, was my stuff. The other side of the loft was Ileana's stuff. And in the middle, you start to see uh, us combine. And you can see our ideas kind of getting closer together. Some of those were outright collaborations. Um, and so that, that was kind of the idea was like, what's going to happen when two people, two artists come together and converge? That was our idea behind it. So what do you guys learn from each other? Like, what was your biggest stick from Ileana? Um, I think uh, having fun, you know, <laughs> yeah, I had more fun. Again, I'm like super serious and shit in my head. Um, so when she was in the studio, it was like we had a lot more fun together. Um, you know, I wasn't so concerned with myself or, you know, my ideas of who I am as a mm -hmm. as an as a dramatic artist or something, you know, yeah. um, is it. And also with people, right? Like Ileana is really good with people. Like that's one of her really good assets is that she's good at uh, reaching out to people, making connections. And uh, really, that's that's what art really is. Right. And I think that's why you guys are doing this, because it's like the art scene. It's about the people. And for me, sometimes I get caught up in the concept or the style so much, but it, it's really about all the people that come together around art. I think Ileana taught me that. What about you, Leah? <laughs> I think for me, um, definitely just like how to be a little more impulsive with my art. Like I'm one of those people that like I got to plan out every detail and like figure out every little thing before I start. And I think Nico is like, uh, you got to just do it. Just go for it. You just yeah. got to start something, you know? And so... Yeah, I think I definitely kind of took from him to like something. Sometimes there's something to be said for just going for it and seeing what happens mm -hmm. um, and not kind of taking so much time on like, man, I got to plan out everything. So just, yeah, like being a little more impulsive and being a little more like trusting your intuition when it comes to like your art instead of planning right. everything to the T. Just just trusting that, hey, you know what? I know what I want and I can make it happen like this. Yeah. So so you're, you're more like overthinking when you're like doing it on your own. Like, yeah. You, know, like you have to like sit down and just, oh shit, like, yeah. this is how I'm going to do this line. And, exactly, yeah. Um, I tend to like, <laughs> I really tend to like agonize over, man, how do I want to convey this theme? Yeah. Like, how am I going to, how am I going to draw this? And what, like, is this the right angle? Is this the right kind of like brush stroke to use? You know what I mean? Which is, yeah, like it can be a lot of overthinking kind of takes away from it sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, definitely that that impulsiveness. And is that how you kind of create your artwork? Like you kind of think of a theme or an idea that you want to convey or you just you're never just like just start painting or drawing and saying like, all right, I can see where this is going. Let me go over with this. Uh, for me, it's definitely like I would say 99% of the time I have a clear idea of what I want out of it. And so it's like either... It's kind of, it's interesting. Like, I think I get inspiration from very different means. Like, mm -hmm. even things like conversations with people tend to inspire me to, like, make pieces. So it can be, it can be conversations. It can be music. It can be movies. Um, but, yeah, I definitely tend to, like, have something clear, like a clear concept that I want to convey before I start. I very rarely just go for it and say, oh, okay, well, this is what, like, this is what it evokes in me once it's done. It's usually a very clear, like, this is what I want out of it. Okay. What about you? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What? No, it's just like, that's weird. <laughs> that guy, I don't know. It's for me. Not yeah. that it's just is, weird. Is, is, that your, is it your style to kind of just go and it experiment all or what? It depends. Uh, usually, like, when I do paintings, uh, it's just whatever the canvas tells me. Like, mm -hmm. I just grab it and it's like, okay. 
I know what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Like it's it's usually in the moment or how like what I'm feeling that day. Like I cannot if I'm doing a painting that I plan, it's usually for a commission mm -hmm. Mm. or it's a it's a drawing of a person because I like I had to draw them and like had to do the sketch and then clean yeah. it up and all that. But when I do <laughs> paintings that are my own, I just like this is what I that I feel at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then every day it's gonna change if I took longer, especially for bigger pieces. Mm -hmm. Like you'll see different themes in one painting, but it's still the same message. Like yeah. it's just more like this is gonna happen. That's it. Or if I'm listening to something or watching something, like it kind of blends blends into the to my drawings and images. Yeah. yeah, I think I I can I can relate to that. That's kind of how I look at art. Um, a lot of it just starts with me experimenting because mostly, I mean, now. I mean, we both started doing more stencil work with this one. So like stencils and shit, which is great because before COVID, we weren't doing that. Um, but before that, I was like almost 99% of my stuff was just abstracts. Yeah. So, of course, you can't plan an abstract, you know. You can have maybe some ideas, you know, like, okay, I'm going to make, I want to have this idea where there's going to be open space here. And there's going to be a concentration in the right corner or the left corner, or whatever. Sometimes I have that stuff in my mind. Mm -hmm. But with the, with the paint is so like, it does its own thing. Right. So it's half what I do and it's half what the paint wants to do. Yeah. So if I planned it out, it would it wouldn't work. So I'm starting to plan some stuff now, but for the most part it's about me just experimenting in the moment and kind of once I'm going, I see where it takes me. I think that's partially because of your medium though. Like I think using house paint, like mm -hmm. oh. it's a totally different oh, that was gonna be my question, like, kind of paint. Yeah. yeah. It's like a totally different game than using like acrylic or spray paint. Yeah. Like it, it's more uncontrollable, I would say, than like using like acrylic paint. Yeah, but. exactly. So yeah, I use the house paint, go to Home Depot or or some 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 sketchy place in <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> you know, uh, that's it, a paint store that just looks weird from outside, but yeah. it's like badass paint. Yeah, okay, I know. Which you got you got to talk to some of the weird I'm, people there yeah, for a while. You know, go on Texas Street and like, oh shit, there's a painting store. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or like a storage shed. Sometimes I buy paints from people's storage sheds. Oh, shit. they saw they have little paint stores and. Your storage Damn, sometimes. I never seen that. Now I'm curious. About that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just go on Craigslist, look at paint sales, and you can see sometimes you can get like a huge, <laughs> like a five gallons of red paint for like twenty dollars. I'm like, hell yeah. Then <laughs> yeah. you have to use it because it goes bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, it starts drying slowly. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> then that, that'll be my my fear is like, oh, should I bought all this paint and now I forgot to use it. Yeah, that that, hap that happens. But I feel like when it's a lot of paint, it's less likely to dry out because it's so much. No. Like if you got a big, huge tub of it, it's going to stay liquid. But if it's like a little yeah, pint like, or something, it'll go, it'll dry out quick. So yeah. like house paint. Uh, yeah. I think only for murals I've done that. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't even know what each type of paint is. <laughs> I'm like, I thought it was just paint. <laughs> There's also uh, oil paint. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and watercolors. Yeah. And oil paint doesn't wash off. Like with water, you have no, to use like uh, turpentine. I just stick to finger paints. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> you still Washable. You take it off. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, like I'm actually surprised about the house paint. I wasn't expecting. That yeah, you, that's what you use. Yeah, even when I'm, even on small canvases, I use house paint. Because I was gonna I, when I saw it the first time when you had it on coffee party, I thought it was acrylic and spray. Yeah, there, there's there's some spray like the stencils I do spray, yeah. but everything else is house paint. Oh. And sometimes I even mix it. Like I'll like take a, a brush, stick it in the house paint, and then use a stencil. Well, and then I'll stick it in water right away yeah, yes. so that way it gets like a stain to it so you get almost this watercolor yeah. vibe from house paint so i do that as well learning shit. yeah <laughs> that, that, that's straight up <laughs> experimentation though that's for me not knowing what the fuck i'm doing so right away i just go and you know try shit it. and it works sometimes <laughs> sometimes sometimes that's the key sometimes. but i don't show i don't show the stuff that doesn't work publicly you know so that stuff stays sometimes that's the best thing yeah like, sometimes like, oh shoot like came out of your <laughs> Now yeah. I like it. Yeah, like yeah. one time somebody was coming by to buy a painting or two, and then I had this one on the easel. I'm like, dude, I'm like I'm like this. I hate this. This is ugly. And then the guy came and he's like, oh, what's that one you're working on? Can I buy that one? That one's my favorite one. So of course, <laughs> of course, I sold it to him, right? But, but I, I was surprised. You know, yeah, sometimes you don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing. Like, yeah, I don't want to sign it. <laughs> you, didn't, you, you didn't get it from me, man. <laughs> it's 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 interesting to me, like what people respond to, like the pieces that people are like really connect with are yeah. always the ones that I'm like, man, yeah, no, but this is a, this is an off piece. You know what I mean? Like this is not the best piece in the show, but it's interesting. Like what people glean out of each piece. Like you just never know like what people are going to connect with, which is super cool. Like that's part of what I like about 
doing stuff that's in a more abstract style is it gives people a lot of room to like personalize their own art experience, which I really like. Yeah, that's true. Because people like when it's abstract, they look at it and they can find what they identify with. They're like, you know, oh, you know, I see a, I see a lady here or I see a, a horse. Or like people always see animals, you know, like, yeah, yeah. and then I see them afterwards, you know, like, oh, there's a lobster. Now, now I see a lobster every time I look at that and they buy it because they like, it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, huh, I see chicken wings. Yeah. Chicken, yeah. Food. People see, like, I see food. food there. Oh, yeah. And I, I let them, whatever they, you know, like that's somewhere for somebody to connect with yeah. it, you know? I think that's the best part. Just having people just actually stop by and just look at it for like five minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the fuck is it? Like, whatever you want dude yeah yeah, yeah exactly you, it's you, whatever you, you want me. it to be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that you can tell them where you were going through or have a name for it that it's literally what it is but then uh-huh. people are always gonna like oh shit like this is weird like it's yeah me. and also tell them like you also get to orient this however you want if you want to turn it upside down it's your painting now so that's how you get to express yourself is you can put it upside down whatever you want to do you know yeah. Mm-hmm. and you guys are like okay with that like there isn't never a time when you're kind of like no that's not what it is <laughs> like this is what it is no no that honestly no because sometimes someone t- turns it upside down i'm like oh that, that looks even better you know? <laughs> yeah. how did i how did i not see that ahead of time you know <laughs> i think I, I, that had happened to me once just because i was setting up a show uh-huh. and i have my canvas on the floor and i'm just like I'm gonna hang it up this way now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had to change the whole wall after that. Yeah, yeah. Because I'd already laid out everything. Uh-huh. So I'm just like, ah, oh, crap. Everything else had to change in relation. Yeah, because yeah. I put it as a landscape at the end. It was, it was like, ah, oh, crap. I don't have space in the wall, like for the other pieces. Yeah. So I had to change it around. So you cha- it was a landscape and you changed it? It was a portrait. Like, oh. it was laid out. I did it as a portrait image, uh, painting. And yeah. then I just, I was walking around and had it on the floor and I was like, oh, shit, it fits like a landscape. Like, oh, a wow. So I hang it. And I was just like, crap, like the uh, two side paintings don't fit anymore. Oh, wow. So I had to go and move the whole the whole gallery just yeah. so I can sit it that's up. All, that's always yeah. a pain. For those of you guys that aren't artists, that's a pain in the ass. You ever thought, how do they get the paintings on the wall? That's always the hardest part. It's an art in itself. Just yeah. It measure. is, yeah. Because people are like, oh, you just hang it. It's like, no, you measure the floor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> yeah, and then you like, you have to make sure it's level. And then you have like, for example, with this one, we couldn't put holes in the wall, so we had to use command strips. Mm-hmm. And it was like very, that was really hard. I had on that was one. Well, that and just like trying to find what looks good together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's the process of like bringing things in and then switching them around and let's put it on this wall. No, like let's switch around the other side of the wall. Let's move this here. Let's move yeah. that here. Like trying to figure out what looks good together is also like a hard part of the process for sure. You might have an idea and then you put them through and you're like, oh shoot, like this one goes with the other painting. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Especially because like, when you guys had the show, you had so much open space. Yeah. So I think that's also like a, a problem. Uh-huh. Just because you want, you see it on this wall. You're like, oh, yeah, I like this wall, but now this wall looks off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just because it's... You want the spacing like, between everything. Yeah. The spacing and then just like maybe the painting doesn't like, go well with the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like a symmetry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, so then when you do that, I guess when you're planning a show, do you think about that? Or like, okay, how many pieces do I need? So this whole space looks good. Uh, do you think about it that maybe way? I feel Eliana probably does but, <laughs> but I don't like I just yeah. my philosophy is, is volume quality through volume so I try to just make as many as I can um, and then when the time of the show comes like we are this, this show is big for you know for you saw there was a lot of pieces yeah. there that wasn't even all my pieces you know I still have more that I couldn't bring so for me I just have a bunch and then I think okay what which ones will fit here you know I did an exhibition you mentioned that you guys when you were at coffee party I had an exhibition there and it was like five pieces. So that was like, I had like 40, you know? So I'm like, well, let me see what five would go cool there right yeah. now, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, uh, for me, I don't plan it out. For me, it's like, I'm a problem solver. I'm about troubleshooting, you know? I'm like, okay, I'm in a situation. I didn't plan out ahead of time. Let's go, you know? And I do well in that situation. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it depends. Like in this case, we didn't see the space until pretty like, maybe the week before the show. So there was not that opportunity to be like, okay, I'm going to plan everything out and like make sure that there's this amount of pieces. But I mean, if I do have the opportunity, yeah, I'd rather kind of like plan and yeah. say, yeah, okay, this is like how many I need to fill a space. But she's, she's but, yeah. a planner. I'm, she's de- a planner. I'm definitely which a planner. Is great, which is again, collaboration. It was great to work with the planner. <laughs> You were like, okay, no, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, okay, she's going to plan it. I like the planning. You're like, it yeah, gives me true. something to do, yeah. so it's good. 
like I'm born with a plan. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I remember just setting up shows and we we would always put everything on the floor, like more mm -hmm. or less how we want. If it was like a collaborative pieces together, like we had that wall for that, but we all like let him on the floor before we start hanging. And then that's, we do, uh, we did a whole week of just us laying it on the floor yeah. for each wall. Uh -huh. And then it's just like, okay, now we can like spend another two days just hanging. Cause yeah. Like, yeah. So that's, people understand that's pretty a pain in the ass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially if you want to be very scientific about it. And but measure. also like, you don't know, cause the wall, like maybe the, like you said, the floor might not be level. Uh -huh. So you're like, you're thinking like, oh, they're going to be lined up. And then you put him just yeah. lined up. or like, nope. Like, yeah. There's one a little way off and it, it bothers you like, you don't want to admit it, but it bothers you. Yeah, it does. Yeah. But then it's like, it's already stuck on the wall. Like with the command strips, it's like, they're only sticky once. Oh, that's so true. once you put them up, it's like, oh, shit, don't want to take that down. <laughs> yeah. Because we only have so many command strips. Let's go back to Sam, stick it more. Yeah. yeah. Another 30 pack. Yeah. yeah. We were like. Did that happen to you guys? Once you had everything up, you're yeah. like, shit, I don't really know that this one works here anymore. Uh -huh. Or it would just maybe like, it was slightly not level. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, yeah, we're like, shit. Like, we already, this is like the third time we've stuck this one on the wall. Yeah. Like, damn. But yeah. No. I hated that. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard it's, it's hard. You know, for my first couple of shows, like, I didn't know anything. I just, like, I just want to be an artist. I want to do art shows. And so I didn't know how. I just started doing it. And then I remember my first few times, I'm like, how am I going to get these on the wall? So I started putting in thumbtacks or nails. And then I would try to get it level. But I was there, like, by myself doing it. So I put it up and then I have to walk and then look and it'd be messed up. And I'll, it was like really, it's just like a bad so experience yeah. to do by yourself. You it's know? it's like significantly easier to do when there's like two or more people yeah. kind of helping you and being like, hey, turn it this way, turn it this uh -huh. way. Like it's not level. It's it's definitely better and a lot more efficient as a team effort to like set things up. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> I had those problems a lot. Yeah, we usually set it up or like ourselves like one when i where i used to work at uh-huh and it was just like me one day and then the other guy would take over the other day so it was just like it was so i feel you like i had to walk out i was like oh, okay cool but the problem with that is just like i walked away from it and was like oh shit now i want to add this to this painting oh yeah yeah you want to take it off the wall and add some more yeah or i just did it right down the wall oh like yeah I just tape around the wall just in case oh you know, yeah like but accident the brush hits that's the interesting wall. yeah <laughs> It has happened once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I also had a show where uh, I did, when I graduated, it was, I did over 200 pieces Damn. for my show. It's a lot. I used two floors. And uh, one of the, I didn't notice until like the day of the show, actually at the show, uh, one of my pictures uh, had a dead pixel. Oh, really? And it's the smallest thing, but I saw it the whole time. Like I kept passing, like I took it out. Like really? I, right in the middle of the show, it was like, I took it you out. Took it, yeah. Because that was the performance art right there. And I <laughs> and I actually painted on the wall, spray painted on the wall. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's cool. And they were like, well, did you plan this? Like, no. It was just like, no. I was really mad about that. Yeah. Because <laughs> my professor went and was like, that, I think that was cool that you did that for the show. I was like, oh. Yeah, I like how the painting good. went off of the painting onto the wall here. That was, it was, like, that was yeah. a good idea. Was like, that's bad. It's like, <laughs> you know, it wasn't planned. Yeah. Like, it was just bugging me. I just claim it. Whenever something like that happens and someone's like, was this intentional? I'm like, yes, it was mm -hmm. the yes. whole time. <laughs> Nothing you were that's talking about. That's you should do, man. It's like when when you're playing a show and you're playing music, oh, you wait, mess up. up. You're not yeah. supposed to acknowledge it. Just keep going. Jazz. Just own it. That was just jazz, keep right? going. Yeah. That was a part, jazz part of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's improv, you know? You never know. Even when you make it, your mic. <laughs> even when you make it stop. Yeah. yeah. Even when you, when you accidentally make a joke too, and someone's like, oh, that was really funny. Like, did you mean to say that? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, of course I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm I fucking hilarious. Yeah. You just take it off. Yeah, but you never know. Like some people, some people like those little imperfections. Like yeah, just I think because there's a picture that's bugging me. Like uh, I just didn't notice, and the thing that I mm -hmm. noticed was at the show. Yeah, was like I had set it up three days before, and it just yeah. never. Like I never looked at that one. Like I the the pictures that I took at that time, it was just like I already liked them. Like I I don't usually edit my pictures. Mm -hmm. I like just raw photography by itself, just playing with the lenses. Mm -hmm. And that one, I was just like, oh, like I had it already set up that floor. That part of the build, the floor was uh, my photography section. And it was the biggest too. So it's just like, I didn't think about it. And then the day of the show, like an hour before, it's like, oh, yes, it's epic. Like it just, <laughs> by accident, I saw it. Oh, man. And it's just like, every time I would have, you had to walk around. So yeah. yeah. People's are always going to stop you and talk to you. Did, are you, would you. Would you consider yourself a perfectionist? Depends, like I said. Like if it's for graphics, yeah, I have to. Yeah. Like it's always... If I see like a curve and it's just, I see that little dot that it's just not the perfect curve. Yeah. It bugs me. Yeah. I have to go back and fix it. 
Mm-hmm. It's better just for graphics more than anything. Yeah. Do you think having shows for photography is different than like for paintings? A uh, little, because people just get it more. It's like I think people just more literal. Like they see pictures, like okay, this is what it is, and I that's why I don't like editing my picture to it because I want to see like what the lens is gonna do in the light mm-hmm. during the day. Yeah, especially when I did a lot of like downtown pictures. Yeah, like, I was like, oh, I've been to that store. They remember the buildings. Because mm-hmm. I will, I will break it into buildings. Not gonna lie, like uh-huh. abandoned buildings. The pictures there yeah. are from uh, rooftops, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh shit!" Like, how you got that picture? Like, I... secret, yeah, through yeah, secret means. Uh, I did a, I did a, I did a shoot uh, for dagger for my graduation, and I, I went inside the Crest building, mm-hmm. and I went to the basement. <laughs> oh damn! And everyone's like, "Where you got this? Like, where were you at?" I was like, ah. "You don't want to know. It's a, it's a secret." There's a little sledge, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a little hole there, there next to the gate. Yeah, <laughs> it was weird because I had like I had someone with me and like they were part of the picture. She was a model and uh, convincing her to just so we had to break in into a, a building at night. Yeah, <laughs> and I was just like, "Ah, uh, shoot!" Did you convince her? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> Good job for the adventure. <laughs> She's like, I never done something like this. Like, well, well it's always you know. the first, first time. Yeah, first time for everything. First time for everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, I I have never had like an an exhibition specifically for photography, but it's you had to and that you really had to plan it because uh, the pictures it's more of a theme. You cannot just do okay, like all my pictures. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. Now it's more like you want to tell a story as soon as you walk into the gallery through the pictures, than actual like paintings you can play around with people's feelings and yeah. your own and all that but yeah i, I always had to travel with so you, you got a different philosophy depending the, on the medium yeah yeah that's I interesting think, i think that's what changed a lot of me especially when just being in a when i was an educator just kind of just seeing it grow from like students and stuff it was like oh shoot like this is like now i see why you're doing this uh-huh it makes so, sense yeah yeah no yeah. I, it makes sense like that you have to be kind of more consistent with photography because i mean I think like people respond well to a narrative, like a story, and it's cool to be able to tell that through something like that's yeah. People have seen those things before, yeah. so they like can respond to them and recognize them very easily. Where were we? She, it always <laughs> happens. <laughs> um, uh, now I was gonna ask you guys. So, how long have you guys really been doing? I guess like your artistic work and everything. Like, what was it that got you guys started in saying like, okay, I want to be an artist, and mm-hmm. this is where I'm going with it. Um. I think I'll oh, painting. I've only been painting for like five years, but I've been doing music for like 10, almost 15 years. Um, so visually, when I started designing, when I was in bands, like I would, I would have to design stuff for album covers and stuff like that. So that's kind of how I got into graphic design, into the visual world. And then naturally also you're filming music videos and stuff like that. So I, I got into the visual element through that. And then eventually I was like, well, I just want to be able to create the images 100%. Mm-hmm. And then... Of course, that comes to the tangible element of painting. So yeah, about five years ago, I started doing painting. So for me, I, I did look at myself more as a multimedia artist. Okay. I do so many different things. Like I got my MFA too, but I got my MFA in writing, not in painting. So I just do a bunch of stuff. And for me, uh, it's all kind of one leads into the other, leads into the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of hard for me to pick one moment where it all started. But for me, it's like one thing, you know. So I've been doing this for like 15 years, maybe. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Liana? So uh, I've only been painting for about four years and then photography, um, probably about three. Um, but I, I don't know, like ever since I was little, like I remember always kind of being drawn, like, always drawing and always like doing, I don't know. Obviously, it's different, right? Drawing when you're little than like when you're kind of doing it for a living. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've always kind of been inclined towards art. I've always enjoyed looking at other people's art and kind of like it's always played a big role in my life but Mm. it wasn't until like yeah about four years ago that I was like you know what this is something that I want to do um more seriously and it's actually the crazy thing is that I had picked up a flyer for one of Nico's shows on a whim at a coffee shop and I was like you know like I don't know anything about this but let's go check it out so I went and I remember being super surprised um just because I'd never been to an abstract art show before And so I was like, you know what? Damn, like if this person's doing it, what what's to stop me from doing the same thing? And it was like right around the same time that I had just gotten into painting. 
So it's super cool that it was actually his show, one of his first shows that like really got me into the the mindset of oh I could do this like professionally I could yeah. do this seriously so and then you collaborate yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. yeah cool? it's exactly. so cool. it's so I cool. about that all the time now we're collaborating it's mm -hmm. so cool yeah, yeah. like that's that's kind of cool because it's weird like not room we're a lot of people sadly a lot of artists like they're really like anal about like working with others yeah mm -hmm. or is, like especially if it's a girl or something they're like oh no like i'm not gonna work with you <laughs> really no, yeah no, I mean, there's a lot of them <laughs> Wait, what? No, no like they won't work with girls there's no or, girls allowed yeah it's like dude like really like, yeah that's crazy, really man. yeah that's a trip did, did you know that? i'm not gonna say his name but uh <laughs> the mural next to the uh, art museum yeah the guy that does that doesn't like working with girls really he's oh. he's the one that told Kristen that uh, you can hold my brushes whoa that's collaborating that's crazy dude. that's crazy that's ridiculous. And I and I know that guy. Like he, I used to look up to him like as a mentor because yeah. I like he taught me a lot of like techniques. But then after that, I was like, dude, like, why? <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. That's crazy, man. No, I mean I like the collaboration process. I I think it's just like for me, I'm definitely a people person. Like even even kind of getting into art, like a big reason why I like kind of honed my drawing skills and that kind of thing was because I liked to give art to people. It was like a gift thing for me. Like it was always kind of about like, okay, I'm doing this for other people. So yeah, like I think that that's one of the best parts about art is kind of like doing it with other people and sharing it with other people. Learning from other people. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <I> hate collaborating. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Especially with girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking out of this. Yeah. <laughs> the whole show is me. <laughs> no, I just I think like I guess when I started like it was just. We had that problem a lot. Like a lot of people mm -hmm. were like, "Oh, I don't want to, like, I don't want you to like take my name or something and do it." It's because I think a lot of it you have to be willing to give up your ego to do yeah. it. That's a lot of what it is. People don't really understand how to just say, "Okay, forget my ego, step it aside." Uh -huh. Maybe they are better at me than this, or they can help me with this. Yeah, or I um, think they're better at. Or yeah, <laughs> I think. I mean, for me, that's the thing that I've seen. You know, playing with musicians and other bands, stuff like that. A lot of times, like, you know when you're gelling, right? But then there's always some people who are like, yeah, they're just, it's just not going to work. And I think that's always the thing that I see that kind of conflicts of a lot of it. Yeah. It's just the ego. Yeah. That people just can't put their ego aside. Yeah. And, you know, I've been guilty of that, too. Sometimes, I'm like, no, I want it just my, just me, only me, my thing, me, all me, well, Which me, is me. not bad. Like, no, it depends it, on the, yeah. like, if you're doing a, your own work like, yeah. for, like, your own exhibit and you're ready, like, okay, like, it has to be. Just, yeah, like just it, just this way. We we used to I had a friend who says like there's nothing be wrong with being um um uh, what is it narcissist? selfish yeah selfish like mm -hmm. you always have to be selfish once for your for your own mm -hmm. good yeah because maybe yeah like you're learning from others but there's time where you're like okay where am I gonna use that thing that I learned yeah and, and that's when you want to make your own work mm -hmm. before you just for sure show. and I think being able just being able to do both and for yeah. me it's very easy to compartmentalize like okay cool like this is something I'm doing solo and this is a collaboration and you know, more and more, I'm getting more into collaborations, though, because for a while, it was more a lot of I was doing everything by myself. But um, yeah, no, yeah, but see, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's yeah. nothing bad in wanting to be oh, selfish no. and like, especially mm -hmm. when it's your own stuff, of course, like take pride in it. That's what you want to do. But yeah. then you just have to know when you are going to collaborate. Yeah, you have to be willing to just give in a little bit. Yeah, you, you, gotta, can, yeah. you cannot have it your way completely. Exactly. Yeah, there's, there's an element of compromise that's absolutely necessary mm -hmm. in making a collaboration yeah. work for mm -hmm. sure. But the benefits are just so huge from collaborating, you know? Yeah, because you also like get another point of view. Yeah, you always uh -huh. like lock yourself in your painting that you're sitting hours. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the one thing I missed from school, like college wise. Yeah, it was just like it's also just a group of just artists working together. Like, but just here looking at the other side, like, hey, you need to fix that, or like you can do this on there, uh -huh. and then you, they get that same thing. Like, yeah, let you tell like, oh shoot, and just having that opportunity from stepping away from your own work, right? And someone comes in, is like, hey, what if you do this? Yeah, mm -hmm. like, like the whole workshopping process. Yeah. Yeah, because 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 in my program it was writing, so uh, it like a lot of was workshopping. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you bring in a piece, you know, whether it's a poem or a story or whatever, and then everybody's you sit in a room and then everybody talks about it, and you know, like at first you also feel very vulnerable because it's like you're not allowed to talk. Maybe yeah, after at the end you can talk, but in the, but it's like okay, seven people that are pretty good, like that are they're very intimidating, are gonna say well, you know, and most of the time people are nice, but it still feels very vulnerable. You're like oh man, like. I don't want people to talk about my stuff, but when you get, when you get that feedback, I mean, even if only 10% is relevant to you, that 10% might be like perfect. And I was in those situations a lot of the time where I'm like, you know what? That was really that one tip that I got 
was totally true. I, I, I really can put that to use. But, you know, I don't have to necessarily take all of that, you know. And I think that's part of the collaborative process is being able to say, okay, oh, well, let's keep this. Let's get rid of that. Let's change this. We're willing to let things be in flux sometimes. Is be nice. able to take critique, yes, uh -huh. in general. Yeah, yeah as a sure. person, you know. Yeah. And that's hard, yeah. you know. That's not an easy thing. No, no. Nah, well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, for me, I think that's the thing that I like about it. Because, yeah. like, I was, that for me, like, I'm kind of the same when you guys are saying that. Like, obviously, when you're working on something, like, if I'm like, working on a song or something, like, okay, mm -hmm. this is what I want to be, blah, blah, blah. But then yeah. I, like, showing it to people and then them give me their critique, especially from other musicians. Because I'm yeah. like, there's obviously people that do things better than I do. Mm -hmm. So I like being able to say, okay, well, maybe I can try this. Maybe I can try that. Yeah. But I don't know. That's just what I'm saying. Like, I think you just have to be able to give in a little bit. Like, yeah. even more. I think even when you put out your work and things like that, mm -hmm. getting the feedback just in general. Yeah. Like I never try and get so upset about it. Like if someone says something bad, I'm like, all right, fine. That's your opinion. I'll yeah. think about it maybe. But even if not, like, fuck it, dude, it's my work. I'm going to do what I want. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. Lie, you, go to, you go to the shower and cry. Yeah. <laughs> and you do it in the shower. So not in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> the closet. The, the closet. closet. Yeah. You put your sunglasses on. Put my sunglasses so. on. Yeah. I'm like, what I don't see them. They don't see me. Yeah. <laughs> put some music. <laughs> Get some ambient noise. Yeah. <laughs> some rain. Yeah. So, uh, so Alexa, go, tell Alexa, Alexa, play my sleeping sound. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what kind of music do you do? Uh, I do a little bit of everything, man. Honestly, yeah. I try. I try and do a lot of different things. Um, I never really. I that's like the thing. That's why I was asking you about your styles. Yeah. For myself, I don't really think I like, I have like a style because mm -hmm. I've never been someone that just cuts kind of sticks to one genre. Like I love doing pop music. I love doing pop punk. I love doing mm -hmm. some rock. I like doing every now and then I'll come up with some electric type stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I don't really have like a specific style of things. Yeah. So I mean I like to try and do a little bit of everything, mainly also because I like learning about every single style right. and to see what kind what can I take from this, what can I take from that and kind of do that. I mean I told me and this guy man we started playing in a band together for a while. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah. You, so you're a musician too then? Huh? Kinda. Yeah. I try. <laughs> <laughs> I dabble. <laughs> no, yeah, I used to play for a while for a long time. So yeah, I right on. Grew up on that. What That's did cool. you play? Uh, well, I do guitar, bass, piano, and harmonica. Which okay. A lot of people think it's like the, the harmonica. harmonica. I speak it as a joke, but it was I actually ended up liking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I could do like stupid intros for like videos and stuff. Oh yeah. So it was just that. And that's my cool. grandfather had a bunch of harmonicas oh, and I kept one. So. A, whole a whole little collection of them? Yeah, no, he had a bunch. He's, that's badass. Like, he, my grandfather uh, played every instrument. Uh huh. And he wrote a lot of music for Mexican movies. Oh, really? And Argentina tango. So, like, oh, wow. he never taught his kids, only his grandkids. <laughs> yeah. Because he didn't want to, to cause, like, the back in the day, like, yeah, know? like, he actually struggled a lot. Yeah. So, uh -huh. he didn't want his kids to do that. So, but somehow, like when we were born, like he started like teaching us. That's that's really cool, man. Which instrument of those that you mentioned did you like playing the most? Uh, crap. I think uh, it's lately it's just the bass because that's the last thing I played. But it's just I learned a lot because of him. And, like he would like actually like was like yeah you fix this like taught me more like to clean up my noise, and it's just always oh, funny because I just have to slap it. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I I used to love it like playing guitar and all that. Don't get me wrong, but. I don't know. I, I think just as, at the end, the bass just became something well, that I enjoy more. See, that's what I'm saying. Like when you said about collaborating, though, because mm -hmm. like with me and Alex, I think that's the reason we kind of gel well together. There's mm -hmm. things that he does that are at, that he's way better at that I'm not good at, and there's things yeah. that I can do that he's not good. At. Right. But we help each other out with yeah. it. Like when we would play music, I would kind of like take more of the lead on that and kind of help him, show him this, try this, try that. But when we do like this stuff, for example, like yeah. the editing for like all these videos, <laughs> yeah. it's mainly all him. And like yeah. I've been learning from him because that was the thing that I don't really know how to do. Yeah, because yeah, he's way better at audio. But then yeah. video wise, I do. So like there's there's a mixture of it. And I think that's what I'm saying. Like there's certain people you can't collaborate with, but it's also because we're willing to collaborate. We're willing right. to learn from each other. Yeah. Like I'm never sorry to say like when people ask like for like our logos and stuff that we do i'm like hey don't talk to me talk to that guy like mm -hmm. he's the one that takes care of all that because i can barely draw a circle yeah <laughs> so circles well, are hard man yeah. that's, that's the hardest thing to draw can you draw a perfect circle just like no no, no. no that's why that's why i say no it's hard <laughs> and then i shake a lot too because <laughs> i miss my 
from drawing, I messed up my nervous system. Oh yeah, I used to do stippling. That was my special. Oh really? Oh, wow. And uh, I you was used to do what? Stippling. It's what, little little that? dots. Oh okay. And I would do paint drawings that are like six by eight feet. Wow, all stippling. Uh, wow, all stippling. And it was just like I was, because I was already doing graphics. I was like, I wanted the perfect dot. Yeah. So I forced my hand too much that I burned my nervous system. Oh wow. And now I cannot do a straight line. Like if you give me to do a straight line, it takes me forever. Yeah. But uh, I learned uh, from uh, Phil Hansen has the same problem that I do. He's uh -huh. an artist. Uh huh. And it's, he said uh, embrace the shake. Yeah. So I started doing a bunch of drawings just by shaking. Like it's just my head. So that's why I also like paintings and all that for me now takes longer because after a while of painting, like I start shaking. Really? To the point where like my hand just doesn't Whoa. control it. That's wild, man. So I'll wake up in the morning. Like I know something went weird like last uh, the night or something. Like I do when I was asleep, my two hours of sleep. Because <laughs> uh, I wake up shaking a lot. And I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, so wow. I had to like, and I do get therapy. I get every month. I had to get shocks. So yeah. It, just to say that it doesn't spread more. Uh-huh. So. That's, that's wild. That's wild, man. Yeah. A lot of people are like, how do you shake it? I was like, oh, damn. Like, it's weird. I have to explain all this. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, you're, but that's you're like, damn, I need a bump. Yeah. <laughs> you need to come back up. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> been too long been too long <laughs> yeah that's but, what, yeah. That, that's cool though because yeah like a lot of times like what makes an artist style cool is their uh what makes them different right yeah their, their I, imperfection i think when i like when there's two critiques I, I would always a lot of people talk shit about people like oh that's the mistake it's like nah, that's what makes it better yeah like, like, that makes them style. stick out yeah yeah like if you fucked up an eye or anything on your drawing it's like kind of I'll, I'll leave it like mm -hmm. yeah even the last painting I did, I, I recorded a video for it. I usually do that. Like, I like to record my work as I'm doing it. Just to do something with video or less. Yeah. And uh, I'm one of, you see me change shirts and all that because different days. Mm -hmm. But on one of them, like, I actually, the shake got so bad that I collapsed. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it started spreading to my leg. Like, uh -huh. it was dealing with other personal stuff. It was just anxiety. So I was using a cane uh -huh. for a while. And, like, I, sh I fell and I was on the floor for, like, an hour. Cause I was just like, ah, I can, like I can't get up. Oh shit! Sure, that's <laughs> like hard. one leg was perfect, but I was just like, every time I step, I was like, nope. Oh man! Like, so I just sat down, and I just went to the brewery after that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to calm down. You know? Yeah, calm down the beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like when I showed up to the brewery, and I, uh, one of my friends, a car friend, uh, he was like, well, "You're in a cane." I was like, "Are you okay, dude?" He's like, no, he's like, I'm just old, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and he's in, and he needs to be an alcoholic dad. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, shaking's crazy. I mean, like, uh, so sometimes like. When I get my blood taken, yeah. whatever, like I like I took a COVID test, negative, negative, <laughs> right? I took a COVID antibody test, it was negative, but it was like a blood test. Oh, nice. I didn't realize there was a blood test. I thought it was gonna be the nose test. And so they pull it out and then I'm like, oh, it's not a big deal, but I get weird about needles. And then I'm like, no, it's cool, man. Cause I've been doing the Wim Hof breathing exercises. So I'm like, I got this, I'm doing Wim Hof. And before you knew it, I passed out. No and shit. Then, Did you eat anything before? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Maybe, you know? <laughs> probably, that, yeah. That's probably why. But um, a few times that's happened to me where, but I wake up like shaking, you know, uh, like having like, a seizure or whatever. Uh, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's not fun, but it, that's like an artistic thing too. You know, a lot of artists have like some, we weird, have neuro <laughs> some weird neurological issue, you know, it, it correlates with creativity. Wait for that, Ileana. It's gonna happen. I'm scared. I know. Like, like, I'm thinking, we can, man, we can what's gonna happen to me? You're gonna. There's lots of ways we can make it happen, Ileana. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we see you, like, like, like what happens? Like, my yeah. eyes twitch. You know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I know. I know my dad. Like, like this you guys are like, starter like, for life now. <laughs> <laughs> I went to draw in a perfect circle. It's like, yeah, we all shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't think I know anybody has done like a. Perfect circle, circle, just like in one take. It's always like I see the guy on YouTube. You know what's the one thing I can never draw? Like I used to draw a lot, and I would just draw like pictures of like cartoon characters and everything that I would see. Yeah. But the thing that I can never get right on them Feet. was the <laughs> eyes. Oh yeah. Like I can never, ever, ever get the eyes right. Like I remember yeah. I'd be there like at least five or six tries trying to do the eyes. I'm like, nah, fuck it, I can't do it. Yeah. I'm done. He's blind. He's blind. <laughs> his, his eyes are closed. Glasses. Put some glasses. Put some glasses on him. He's good. You know, that's true. Like sometimes I draw people with their eyes closed just because it's easier for me it, to draw. The eyes so open, much you know? easier. So <laughs> much. I easier. think that's my favorite thing to draw though. Eyes. eyes. But it's because yeah. I don't know. Well, like eyes still the whole story. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah. Because yeah. that's what expresses exactly what they supposed to express the emotion the feeling that that specific moment has i'm like that's why yeah. i can never get it yeah it's hard it's that's hard. Just hard. hard to capture yeah. sure. i love eyes i'm doing hands because uh hands show you like where you're level you're at yeah because even when i used to teach uh, that was our first test draw your hand oh yeah like right next to you like the actual size and everything uh -huh. and it's just like if you know like 
you can learn so much about people just the first time on how they draw their hands. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny because like, I, I struggle to draw anything else, but I draw hands pretty good, <laughs> you know, for my own. Uh, yeah, my and own I use it as a know? practice too, like, because I, I can't go a day without drawing. Yeah. So I had to draw and I was like, well, what's the one thing that I can see all Always. the time? My hands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'll be at the office or everything and you'll see me like just doing like weird handshake. Uh-huh. So yeah. I can, because you never dry your hand open. Yeah, that's the easiest thing to do. It's yeah. so funny that you say that, because like for our show, obviously the main piece, the yeah, the hands, yeah, that's the logo, <laughs> right? But for a bunch of the pieces for the show, and a lot of the pieces I did like right before the show happened, incorporated hands mm-hmm. and eyes, yeah. not eyes yeah. in like the like realistic sense. realistic sense, but eyes in the motif sense. Yeah, I, mean, um, um, I hide eyes on all my paintings too. Like it's something oh, I yeah. like I'll, in the background. Or? If you see that video, the, the spaceman I did, <clears throat> uh, there is there's a skull hidden, and then there's an eye, and if you don't see it unless you see it a certain lighting. Oh, that's oh, cool. That's awesome. I like playing with just dark colors a lot. That's yeah. my thing. That's yeah. cool, man. But yeah, like I hide stuff. It's we all hide stuff. You. I love those little <laughs> Easter eggs in there. Yeah. Yeah, I had a one of my teachers from metals. Uh, she did jewelry, uh, but it was all dicks. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was it was it uh, overtly dicks or was it hidden dicks? No, it was just actually like. Oh, and my, my sister, oh, right. my what? sister, really? Yeah. And then the, uh, my friend she had like Chris a super did, bad obsession or what? Uh, <laughs> breakup. <laughs> <laughs> I know people that do that. They just draw dicks Kristen, all the time. Kristen Kristen hides dicks on her stuff. Did she really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Not on all of them, but she'll. Do I was it. gonna say like what really? <laughs> yeah. So we all hide stuff. Like uh, yeah. I have a friend that also he's he was also a writer, so he writes like the actual like he hides his novels in between like everything that he wrote a poem once and he hid it in a painting oh really? Oh, wow. you, you don't see it and if you get the print like it's really small like super small but it's on like on a hair oh that's so cool. you think it's part of the hair like it's the hair oh like, wow it's, not, it's an actual like phrase from his wow Man, that's pretty that's badass. awesome that's cool yeah that's real special so, yeah we all like i think like that's our thing like we all hide stuff like i had eyes and a high sixes because mm-hmm. mm. that's like my nickname so <laughs> That's interesting. That's super cool. And it's like, a, it's a cool thing too for people looking at it. Like yeah. uh, finding it, that moment of discovery is like and a cool like, thing. And they're like, oh, you did this? Or <laughs> well, yeah. like when I gave you guys uh, a sticker, you do, you like, yeah. your dad is like, oh, so you're the one? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You do hidden Mickeys. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> hidden Mickeys. <laughs> <laughs> but inappropriate hidden but Mickeys. But inappropriate hidden Mickeys. <laughs> yeah, the, the Yuri thing I'm never going to forget because, uh, yeah, she just, she's, at last time she's teaching now on YouTube, but I don't know, like it was just funny you seeing, it's like, like you don't expect it from her it's like the super nice like lady like teacher i had yeah and it's like her jewelry is just like i saw it I was like just stick like yeah it's all like that <laughs> i was like cool cool yeah. you, just, you just never know you just never, you never know. know or need a dig i guess i remember reading about <laughs> this one um you know in the 80s in new york there was like a bunch of street artists and shit right and there was one that they couldn't find and it had a name like merlin or something right but there was like merlin tags everywhere they couldn't figure out who merlin was and then, like five years later, they finally caught Merlin, and it was like this old lady, and she <laughs> nice. was like just an old, she's like sixty year old lady, just like a you know, and she, but she was the one that was doing all the street art, so they never caught her because they never expected they never it to expected be, it to be an old lady. It was just like well, Banks because he just became famous though, because mm-hmm. I was a because I didn't know, and uh, I found we found his work in New Orleans by accident, like we went for the jazz oh, yeah? festival. And I was like, it looks like a Banksy. And then like two weeks later, they posted it. It was, oh, like, yeah. it was actually him. Oh, that's badass. Oh, shit. Wow. And a friend uh, goes to New York a lot. And the big rat that he did on the on a building, he, the apartment they were renting, it was right across the street. That's oh, badass. Wow. And he sent me a picture. He's like, what the fuck? It's like, that's Imagine a Banksy. That. Imagine and that. he was like, well, yeah, you just came up this morning. I just saw it. He's like, we spent the whole night just tagging that building. I'm still not knowing who he is as the best yeah. yeah. You know what? I, I, I've, t- I've talked to Leon about this. I think Banksy might be a collective. He might. Not one artist. Because. Well, no one's like. No one's claimed it. Yeah. And then uh, Chepper Ferry always is like, well, yeah, I know him. But like so, just having that idea of like everybody's protecting mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they're all, maybe they're all being Banksy at certain times. That way it's maybe. harder to catch one person. Because one of my favorite artists is 3D from Massive Attack. Oh. Uh, he's like a street artist in Bristol in like the 80s. And then pe- for a while, people were, there was a conspiracy theory with it. Okay, 3D is Banksy because every time Massive Attack plays a show, a Banksy piece goes up somewhere. <laughs> um, but I mean, either they could be friends because Banksy says he was like inspired by 3D when he was like mm-hmm. a teenager. He saw him doing street art. He's like, oh shit, I want to do this. Um, but at the same time, it, that could just be another cover story for... Yeah. Either way, I think Banksy is more of an idea, right? Uh, maybe. That's, what, that's what I would say because you got a hotel and stuff like now. It's just- 
That's my theory. It's weird <laughs> because he's just been doing so much for so long and just still getting away with it. Yeah, yeah. and still they have no idea. Especially the money thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he made all that fake money. Yeah. yeah. It's like a federal crime, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and the Disney thing is so my favorite. Yeah, thing. yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. The what? The what he uh, did a... Uh, not sculpture. He put pe- people hanging at Disney. Like Guantanamo Bay outfits. Style. He put them at Disney. Yeah. Oh, outfits. seriously? Yeah. Damn. And he just got away with it. Yeah. He just walked out of the park. Nothing. How the fuck did he do that? He had another guy that was with him and then that guy covered for him. But he, the other guy got cut up and then he just... And, and he just slid out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Disappeared, yeah. That's, that's it. That's, a, that's an exit through the gift shop. If you, that's like it's my a, favorite movie. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a documentary kind of style. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna have pretty to watch good. that. Yeah, that's my favorite movie mm-hmm. of, the, of all time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, he did that uh, because when you're street art, you kind of had to do it. Like I remember that when that came out and everything, like we all wanted to do street art. Yeah. And well, I had to, we used to wear masks because we were teaching. Yeah. But also, I carry a backpack with gloves and the wire cane gloves because if they stop me, my hands are not covered with paint. Yeah. Like I'll yeah. do a backpack. Like one time they did follow us. Uh-huh. And I stopped at a water burger, but I threw the backpack under the container. Yeah. And they went in and asked me, like, hey, were you like tan? He's like, no. Like, they like, can we see your hands? I'm like, they're clean. <laughs> All I got is barbecue yes. sauce. Yeah. All I got is honey barbecue. Yeah, I ordered my burger too. I was like, I'm not hungry, but I'm going to take this with me. <laughs> yeah. And a friend, like, he just got in the car and, like, he was able to get back to his car. And then we meet, met again. Like, he picked me up. And then he's, before I left, like, he parked next to the, the container and he gra- we grabbed the backpack yeah nice yeah. that's cool man so if you ever saw singing pollo it was me and a friend <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially my truck one we did a bunch of those oh there. yeah that's cool man and, uh burgess we went inside and did one that's cool man back that's in the day awesome. i need more beer <laughs> <laughs> should have done it when we stopped but. yeah so right now that you guys are talking about i guess like banks you know, kind of and you mentioned you're one of your favorite artists what are some of your guys' like favorite artists that you kind of continuously look to for inspiration you kind of it mm-hmm. kind of keeps you motivated in those kinds of things mm. you go first Liliana. that's a that's a hard question i mean i think she loves everybody so <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge <laughs> art fan like i spend so much time looking at art um but i think i tend to gravitate more towards like people surprisingly that i find on like social media uh-huh. um like people maybe who aren't like famous historical figures um but so, like, for example, one, I don't know if you guys saw the documentary on Netflix about Sukowski. Yeah. You did? What did you think? Man, I was kind of like, I watched it at the end of the night, so I was just kind of like falling in between sleep. Yeah. But I was just like, well, it's doing stuff. <laughs> that was yeah, my idea. No, That's how sure. I felt. I was just like, but also I had to rewatch it and just like actually pay attention. I really, like, I really, really liked that documentary and his style is just really interesting, like very intricate. Yeah, um that's... so i really like i really like sukowski for one um but also just like a lot of artists that like for example there's an artist um from california his name mm. is justin o'neill if you guys are on instagram you should check out his art I actually follow him <laughs> he's badass <laughs> and also a cool thing like just a very cool person um for my first art show i actually showed some photography and i had been to white sands for my birthday that year um and i had taken this picture of a crow and I, you've seen his art. He kind of incorporates like a lot of crows and yes. ravens in his art. So after buying a bunch of stuff from him, I sent him that picture um, yes. as like a, hey, thank you for all the art. Thank you for being a creator. Yes. And he was just super cool and very personable. And hey, thank you so much. And this is like what we like about it. And so, yeah, I mean, definitely like Justin O'Neill is a big one. Um, those those two are definitely big ones. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I fluctuate, I go back and forth and I find artists like on social media all the time I think, that I, I think love. It's a beauty now, having mm-hmm. social media and just find all these people. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like so accessible, you and know? it's like, you live right here too. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, me? Um, I mean, I guess like in terms of a few, I mean, I'm pretty basic. So I love Picasso, um, huge Picasso fan, but I'm a fan more of his blue period specifically i love his blue period uh just like the i don't know the feeling and the gesture and everything there is like really beautiful that's something that i haven't really incorporated as much into my art but i'm starting to um i also really enjoy a lot of old religious art so like growing up 
my mom and my grandma were like super Catholic, like extreme Catholic, you know? So there was like a bunch of Catholic icons everywhere. And so for me, that's kind of the language, the visually that I was programmed in. And so now what I kind of do is like, I try to take images from stuff like from, I don't know, like Durer or, or El Greco or something. And then try to put them in like a uh, urban art context or a modern art context or put it together with abstract art so that I can kind of bring together the ancient and the contemporary, you know, kind of, kind of put these things together and see how it works, you know? Mm. And also in terms of like, so I do stencils, but part of that's because, you know, again, I started doing abstract art. So I'm only now like learning how to draw correctly. Right. <laughs> so the way I get around that is like, okay, I'm like, okay, I can draw it. If it's straight up threshold, white, black, I, I can figure it out. And so the, that works well for, for stencils. So I take like kind of some of these old images and stuff from, from books and things. And I try to redraw them in a stencil format and, and, and bring it into a, a new context and maybe use like a neon color, like a bright green or a, a neon orange or something. And, you know, kind of put, put those things together that don't normally go together. That's kind of what influences me. You should probably hit up Exist. He does that. Yeah, he's, yeah, I like his work a lot. Yeah, he does cool shit. What about you guys' favorite artists? Ooh, shoot. Uh, Natalia Fabia. She's one of my favorite artists. Like, uh, I actually applied to the, to art, uh, what's it, art district, which is an art school in LA, which she was teaching. Uh -huh. um, didn't get in because <laughs> grades-wise. Uh, but it was like the first school I wanted to try in. But the uh, only reason is because she was teaching. Natalia Fabia, I don't know if you've seen guys her work. I I'm not familiar. If you see her oil paints, you think it's an actual picture. Yeah, wow. but all her shows, all her artwork is just uh, kind of what I do is just, she draws a lot of her friends, girls, and it's just the play of she uses like her the show that I got to see from her is uh, she just say host in the wild, <clears throat> and it was just her friends like outside and like so fucking tired and shit like that, but it was just like she just used uh, the methods that she used and techniques they're so prestige and just the way her paintings feel when you touch them yeah it's just that because it's all oil so you have that texture mm -hmm. which you shouldn't touch a painting but i did <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say yeah like oh she let you touch them uh <laughs> no. the same thing happened when uh, they had a van gogh here oh yeah I, you touched, I touched it, it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's the one that works for the right there at the museum and he used like I fucking knew you were gonna do that, dude. Oh, damn. <laughs> you know, what did like, it feel like? It's it was nice. Like it's you kind of feel the pain. Yeah, you feel the pain of like what he was going through just by touching those because the strokes are so hard on it. Yeah, like uh, Van Gogh's strokes are like super hard. Yeah, and it's just like oh shoot, like you kind of feel like what he was going through. Like it's weird to say, but like it's just like you feel it, it's like oh shit, dude. Like I'm sorry. Yeah, I only touched <clears> it twice because then. He got mad. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was but, yeah, I'm Natalia Fabia and I think ooh, Phil Hansen. Yeah, the way he works with, uh, he does something called Goodbye Art, which is art that's going to disappear. Uh -huh. So he does uh, actual images with just, uh, he'll do them on chalk on the floor and if no one's going to see them until you see them. Or he does it with coffee, oh, wow. with the grounds or everything's going to be disappearing. Or he does, he did a, paint, a drawing just with warmth. Mm -hmm. like live warm so once they moved it was gone so he just had the one picture of it it's like temporary it was, yeah. wow so he Transitory. just creates stuff that are gonna disappear with time he did it with he did a, a portrait of amy winehouse with wine and he left it outside he froze it, like he froze it took a picture had it an exhibit and at the end of the like at the end of the month like that because they weren't keeping up with the temperature it just disappear that's interesting so at the end it was just like a top of just wine <laughs> that's crazy so it's him and Natalia Fabia mm -hmm. basically but yeah I follow like traditional artists I would say Wo Van Gogh it's because of his stuff technique uh, Giorgio O'Keefe uh, mm -hmm. just a color wise mm -hmm. and just how all the students and I'm seeing her art her in person is great Kiki Smith's another one just because she's crazy love her stuff <laughs> <laughs> uh, so from they're from New Mexico so it's Okay, Not right on. State. <sighs> but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like those like but honestly if you I would recommend seeing Natalia Fabia and someone that I was lucky to meet was El Mac, which you guys seen the the spray paint that he did here, the paint, the drawing. So mm -hmm. I got to meet him when he was doing that. Mm -hmm. And wow. nicest guy, like I took notes when we talked, I was teaching at the time. And I just talked to him for like two hours. Yeah. And it was just like 
best experience I ever had. Like, that's meeting. awesome. Because he's just like, oh, like, this is how I do this. Like, he actually explained me his method. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, damn, I'm never going to be able to do that. Just because I don't have that. I'm not good that good with spray paint and mm -hmm. changing the heads and making my own heads. Yeah. But I was just like, oh, no, shit. That's, it was good to yeah, get I was just that like information. Learning. Yeah, because one of the things I used to do a lot, like, I would take stuff that I'm usually not doing. Like, I pick up tattooing. But just so I can break stuff. Yeah. Because tattooing and graphic design is the same thing. You yeah. have to break everything to shapes. Okay. So I was just like... Well, it's okay. interesting too because you were saying you used to do like... Um, stippling. Stippling, you know. Yeah. It's like tattoo. Reminded me of tattoos. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I was just like... I'll, I'll pick up stuff if I learn a lot just by... Like if I just talking to people and playing with stuff. That's how I did photography too. Yeah. Uh, Christ. Christ Chavez is a good friend of mine and he's the one that taught me photography, but he's more of a periodistic photography. Uh-huh. And... I like his name. Christ. Uh, Christ. His first yeah. name is Christ? Yeah. Wow. He got he got in so much trouble when he wanted to get married. No yeah. one wanted to marry him. Oh, yeah. Because of his name. <laughs> and then his church, they took like forever really? to get married. They oh, took wow. two years to find a church that will marry him. Wow. It was because Christ of his name. Chavez. <laughs> that's already... That's a rock star name right there. <laughs> <laughs> so every time we would talk about it, like Christ, our Savior, <laughs> <laughs> our Lord and Savior, <laughs> Shall we? but I, that, I think just more like I said, not not tell that yeah, and Phil Hansen. That's interesting, man. Yeah. I would recommend everybody just to look at their work. Just yeah, because it's it's different and I just that, and also maybe Judy Steele as well. She mm -hmm. does everything mm -hmm. more like she'll draw in different styles, a lot of illustration wise mm -hmm. and that, but. Yeah. You know, it kind of reminds me like one artist I really like is uh, Russell Mills, and um, he did the uh, artwork for a lot of Nine Inch Nails stuff. So for um, the Downward Spiral, which is a Nine Inch Nails album, it like it's very textures and abstract, but it's textures, and he used like bandages and uh, distressed uh, fibers and stuff like that. And it, you know, he used one one piece of art called Wound, and so the cover to that album is Wound, and so it's like this kind of tan color but you can see discolorations in it and then there's a giant hole in it that's like a carry very violent album so for me it's like that was really influential like oh wow like I, I get what he's doing on his abstract level it's not totally random he's like using it to to kind of communicate this feeling in a way that i don't think figurative art could and so he's done a lot of that type of stuff so i'm a big russell mills fan i think he's one of the people that kind of influenced me to start doing abstract art to start off with because i saw it i could understand it right away and then of course i earlier i mentioned 3d who is, uh, I like him because he's a musician and he's Natural. an artist. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was always a big Massive Attack fan. So to kind of see that he's, he was actually a street artist first. And then he's, then he became like this producer, rapper, everything, right? That was always very appealing to me. So people like that made me kind of think, because a lot of times, you know, a lot, for a long time, people tell me, oh, you got to do one thing, man. There's a book about that. <laughs> do one thing. You, you can't do more than one thing, bro. You just got to do one nah. thing. And I'm like, that's like the worst advice ever, especially in 2020. It's like now you have to do like 30 things. All the everybody has to do 30 things, yeah. you know. So for but for me it was it was cool because I'd see that guy. I'm like, no, he did it. He on his own right as a street artist and as a musician, as a producer, he did all these different things. So for me that was like very inspiring and it was like, like okay, fuck it, I'm just gonna go do, do everything, you know? Why not? What about you? Interesting on this. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I don't know any artists. <laughs> music, 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 like, music. Yeah, yeah. musically. Yeah. Who's, who's your inspiration? Oh, jeez. Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of my heroes. No. Um, I mean, musically, it depends. Uh, the one that I think that got me, like, really invested into music and more, like, on a performance basis and everything was Michael Jackson. Like, I grew up a huge Michael Jackson fan. I was, like, obsessed with the dude. But then probably like once I got into like middle school, I kind of became more interested in and I guess actual rock music and stuff like that. That's uh, around that point. I think for me, like my favorite band's always been like Green Day and uh, Fall Out Boy was huge for me as well as like pretty sure everybody was really into My Chemical Romance. So I think those kind of bands kind of like shaped the way I started doing things musically. I know what you want to say. You say it all time long. Well, then all time, all time low has been my favorite band for the longest for the longest time. So I think those are the kind of people that I kind of have been inspired by musically, and then even more so because I do a lot of still a lot of pop music. Yeah. So like for me, also like Justin Timberlake and Bruno Mars, those are two guys that I have always like really really listen to their albums and the things that they do because I always feel like those guys, particularly especially in a production standpoint, uh -huh. you definitely hear the evolution, like the way that they evolve into the music and the way 
the way they changed stylistically. Uh-huh. Like you can tell like at one point it was just like, all right, this is just a straight pop album. Then all of a sudden it starts to become, okay, now this is more like actually like a blues R and B album. This is more of a, like even there's some folk in there. And I think for me, musically, that's kind of the people that inspire me, I guess, as an artist from that end. Do, do you feel like, were you, were you interested in like the, the DIY punk thing? Because you kind of mentioned a few post punk bands. I mean, uh, pop punk bands right there. Yeah. Was, was that an inspiration at all for you to like want to do audio visual stuff? Um, I guess so. I mean, I don't know. I think the whole audio visual thing just kind of came about. I mean, I started in music like playing in orchestra. That's how yeah. I started like getting involved in music. Like it was literally just in elementary school. I remember in fifth grade, they tell you, all right, this is the grade where we have orchestra now. Who wants to be in orchestra? And I was yeah. just like, I want to do it. And then I did that. The next thing you know, it just it kept going through middle school. And I think once I got to high school, that's when I was really like, man, like I want to be cool. I want to play yeah. like a guitar. I'll cool. play a band. Nobody yeah. wants I'll to hear a violin. Band. Like yeah. as much as I, I love classical music, like yeah. I mean, I love it. Um, but you know, I wanted to be like in the band. I wanted to like be that person on stage. So that's like that's where I kind of that's for me. Yeah, yeah. The, the that's where like the <laughs> the pop punk in me started to come on. Like I yeah. really got into like the bands and stuff like that. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just kind of like evolved from all from that. It was, I think, my musical journey, I guess, has been kind of all over the place. All over the place. I've never, like the way you kind of said, like people tell you to do one thing. That yeah. was always me. It was like, I can never just do one thing, with, yeah. especially music. Like, I can never say like, I just want to do this kind of stuff. I just want to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, hell no, I want to do it all. Like, I wanted to sing in a choir. I wanted to be the guy, the front man in the band. I also wanted to be the solo pop artist. I wanted to be the guy just jamming along. So, I mean, I think that's kind of always been me. And then I think that's like when I met Alex, I kind of found that whole other collaborative <laughs> art. I was like, all right, this is my, this is the person that can kind of show me how to do these other things and kind of teach me about all this kind of other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like with art, I think yeah. with art too, and you guys are mentioning is like when you're talking about art, it's like, man, I really don't know any artists. Like I honestly never even paid attention to art that much really until I started kind of becoming more, hanging out. I guess, hanging out with him and kind of seeing that side of things. I was always just more musically and never was really on the visual thing. Yeah. Unless it was like movies and stuff. Like that's mm-hmm. when I was huge, like visually. But with the art scene, I think just recently I started becoming more kind of intrigued and interested in it. Mm-hmm. Just because <clears throat> a lot of my our friends. Yeah. Because a lot, a lot of the people I've met too, like a yeah. lot, they're all local artists and stuff yeah. like that. And when it is kind of like a lifestyle thing too, you know? It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, you're around artists and you, you get involved. In- yeah. Because yeah. we have, uh, as friends, we have this saying that we're all alcoholics. But it's just because every time uh, we know each other, just because we see each other at the at bar bars, or, yeah. or at the brewery, and being like a freelancer and how I do it, mm-hmm. it's like that's my meeting place. Like if yeah. I want to, like someone hires me to do something, it's either a coffee shop or like because it's like, oh, you want to have dinner? Like I'm not gonna talk to you when we're eating, so it's weird. yeah. Uh-huh. Like I don't want to do. So we all have a drink. Kinda, yeah, have yeah. a drink, and it becomes a thing. Just it's a joke for us we say it just because it's it's true like we all end up seeing each other somehow at the bar or yeah. at the breweries especially well nowadays there's breweries like old cheap dog and mm-hmm. like we mm-hmm. go and they're friends of ours yeah and just hang out like oh like i said before we started the show like i got sealed i saw those guys yesterday twice was at the brewery and then yeah morning at the bar and it's totally like, it's like well yeah like we all go and have a drink like and it's usually by ourselves yeah like you'll see it's like uh i go a lot and just drink by myself because i just want to like have a beer or not so, talk to someone or yeah. just talk to friends or bartenders uh-huh and then it's like oh like that's why i met exist too yeah at the, at the bar i met i met diego <clears throat> at the brewery i met a bunch of them like me and my sister is like we hang out with a lot of those people so we just kind of grew up in that scene yeah the mm-hmm. bars man like definitely that's where i met like uh, it's crazy like at the show everybody's coming up oh yeah yeah where do we we met the bar we met the bar we met the bar I think the bar also has like a very important role in it. Like it, it provides the cash flow for a lot of music and art, you know, like without, without bars, there's not a lot of music, yeah. you know, it's, it's hard to get, you're not going to get paid as a musician likely unless you're like at a bar, right? Because there's a product being sold, which is the beer. Yeah. So, you know, some of that goes to the musicians. So it all, it all is like one economy in it. So it's like, yeah, the bars is really what allows all of this to exist. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, because it's just, you just see them there, like, because I even had a friend that he's like, every time you come here, you're, you have, you're here with a sketchbook. He's like, well, yeah, I'm just having a beer. And mm-hmm. they actually, back then at the time, um, they have a special, like, chair for me. Oh, yeah. Like, at the bar, like, That's it's awesome. always at the corner. It was just, like, 
she will move people so I can sit there. Like, That's hey, awesome. Can you yeah. please move? Like, cause That's like, badass. What That's power is it? super nice. Uh, can say it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had to bleep it. Uh, oh, okay. But it was uh, actually a... Um, but That's cool. Yeah, like they had it. And also at Savage Goods, they're good friends of mine. Uh, me and Tyler, the owner, we worked together at a coffee shop. We like we would always talk because we were both freelancers. Yeah. And yeah, you see me every every Saturday at 7 a.m. I was I was there from 7 to like 12 just drawing. That's bad. My iPad or a sketchbook. And it, you see me because I've been there like yeah, you see me in the morning. I have coffee. I have a bunch of them. And then at the end, like we at like 12 is I had a beer. That's, that's just that's sitting, inspiring, or, man. Or, or, that or is, wine, like that, whatever yeah. I felt at the day. So I was just like, I stay there for hours and I, like most of the stickers that I do or drawings that I had done were there. They're there. Yeah. That's badass, man. That, that That's inspiring, dude. Like just like even here, like I come and like I'll hang smoke out. and just talk to Fernando or just sit down up, up here by myself and just start sketching. That's great, man. Just the ideas. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's like, super badass. Like I work really close by. Uh, just pop work. in. Yeah, so I just pop in and I was just like, well, I had a long day. Can I want a cigar <laughs> and just sketch something? Mm hmm. Just what I do. Yeah, hell yeah, man. It's yeah. crazy how your environment can affect you so much when it comes to like creating. Like being in a place like this or being in a bar. Yeah. Like you just, it's a different thing than like sitting at home. Like yeah. the creation process is totally different. Yeah, you know, because a lot of people think they think of an artist, they think of a writer, and it's just somebody that they're always alone. Mm -hmm. But I don't find that to be the case, honestly. Like most of the time I see people working around other people. Because I think, like, especially with, like, I guess, drawing, like, someone's going to like, why are you doing it? Like, why are you drawing that? And it's just, you just start talking. Yeah. yeah. And somehow you become friends. Like, that's why I, when we did this, uh, I always, like, mention him, uh, Omar from Crafting Social. Yeah. There's there's a place that you actually go and talk to someone. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a, it's a, it's a bar where you, there's no loud music. Yeah. They have, they have all the BHSs playing movies all the time. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, that's my alarm. Oh. I'm going to leave this in too. Because <laughs> it's too funny. <laughs> but it's just the the fact that you just get to just actually like talk to someone. Yeah. Like that's places that I like. Like I ne I've never been, a, even when I was younger, uh, I was never like to places where there's like loud music. Yeah. Like I rather go to a bar and talk to someone. Yeah, it's like a social thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah like even sure. if I'm by myself, like even if I'm just going to have a beer. Someone's gonna like sit next to you at the <clears throat> at the bar and be like, "Hey, like, what are you drinking? Like, what do you recommend from this place?" Yeah, and it just becomes like, "Oh, cool!" Like, and then probably yeah. by the end of the day, you like end up with a phone number of someone. Yeah, exactly. I remember and then one... you see them there again or you're, yeah, you're all regular the, all the time. Yeah, I remember one time I went to Love Buzz and like I just remember hanging out with two dudes and drinking, and then by the end we had written this scroll. It was like one old guy and one really young guy and me, and then we had we had written like this long poem. You know, strange. Oh, yeah. yeah, like a pretty cool. Cool. Like, like three pages long. You know, it was. It was. Say, uh, is that the bro code? Is that what you wrote? <laughs> yeah. Bro code. Yeah. Bro code number one. Uh, <laughs> I had that book. <laughs> yeah, bro code. Publish that one. Yeah. Oh, Bestseller right. right there. The bro code. <laughs> that place for me has definitely been two ten. Two ten coffee. coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Which one though? Um, the one on Sunset for sure. Sunset? Yeah. yeah. I think that's the one that makes more playful for that. The other ones are a little smaller, and it kind of like. A lot of people that go and just stop by and leave. Yeah, I mean, that place is just such a, um, I don't know, just I've met so many people there and so many people like that. Yeah, you end up talking about art. You end up mm -hmm. talking about oh, yeah. books. You end up talking about music. And it's it's super cool. Like yeah. being, in a, being in a place that fosters that sense of community. And, and coffee shops and bars. Yeah. 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 Well, even when we were at a coffee party, like just talking to them about music because mm -hmm. he has a nice like vinyl collection. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. And we're like... He even told me, like, we we're talking, and then uh, I, he's like, Oh, like, you remember, like, uh, what's up, fuck, uh, Grindcore? It's like, Well, yeah, dude, I fucking love Grindcore. And it's like, I love uh, Arsene, he's got all the girls. And he's like, You have the vinyl for the game of life? It's like, Yeah, dude. It's like, That's a fucking weird ass album to have. It's like, Yeah. It's like, yeah, hell it's yeah. like, Always have like a conversation. We're just having coffee, and then he keeps bringing us different coffee. I'm like, Cool, dude. Yeah, every time, yeah, dude. For sure. Like, yeah, I went, I went to high school with those guys, actually. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was in. Uh, Freshman year speech class. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we all took that class together. We end with my friend. He, he's one of the managers of 210. We all had that class together. <laughs> nice. So That's funny nice. to see. <laughs> it's coffee and beer, guys. Coffee, coffee and, and beer, beer. man. <laughs> it's oh, just, yeah. It, it plugs to like just communication. Like, yeah. Communication, like just hanging out. Like, it, yeah. yeah it, gives, it gives like a reason for people to come together. For sure. You know? Like even if you're not drinking or anything, like you go and you're just like, well, I'm going to go meet up yeah. with this person there. Like I don't have to drink. 
Yeah. But like you're just hanging out with them mm -hmm. and they won't be like having you like, hey, like, why are you drinking? Yeah, nobody's going to bully you. Yeah. yeah. Unless we're just joking around after a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after like five shotgun beers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So what are you guys working on right now? What's going on for the future for you guys? Any projects coming up? Murals. Or? We're going to do some murals. We've been talking about murals all the time. Yes, we, we've we been... Things are in the works in terms of murals. Us or, together or separately though? Uh, both. Or, yeah, both. Both, both. But both. we're going to do a couple together for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm kind of inspired by some of the stuff we've been working on. We just want to take it to a bigger scale. So we've been hunting for walls. We're looking... For, we, we found some stuff. I did my first mural recently. So I, I have a studio at Glassbox. Yeah. And um, there was just like an empty wall. They just had some graffiti on it. Not even graffiti. Just somebody said, I was here. And then somebody put, no one cares. <laughs> and then and you're like, fuck this. I was like, this is the first one. And it's cool because there's also like weights there. So like during COVID, I could go there and I could lift weights and stuff, which yeah. is great when the gyms were closed. But every time I was like lifting weights, I was looking at that wall. And I'm like, that's where I'm going to make my first mural. So I set it up and I, I was really happy with it, the way it came out. So now I'm like, okay. I'm not, I don't want to do canvases. I want to do murals, you know? <laughs> I'm like, I need the wall. It's, it becomes addicting, dude, so be yeah. careful. Yeah. <laughs> I, could, I could already careful, tell. I could already dude. tell, dude. Because, yeah. like, I'm also, like, when I started doing, like, paintings, it's, like, I always do, like, the regular size. And then yeah. I started, like, customizing my own frames. Oh, yeah. And stretching my canvas. And I was like, oh, shit, like, after doing the, my first six by eight, you're like, yeah, nothing's normal. I can't go back. Yeah. Go back. <laughs> like, yeah. And That's then, it. like, finding, like, the good materials, like. Uh -huh. So I have, I have a friend that does my my canvas. Oh, cool! Now. Yeah, and of course it's way cheaper than going to Michael's. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go to Michael's and you get like a a bad frame for like so, super expensive. Yeah, yeah, and then this homie is like, give me forty bucks and I'll, I'll do a five feet one for you. Oh, like, dude, fuck yeah. let me know. I, I want to meet that guy. <laughs> I will hire him for sure. But he's always and he makes it in his house and he's like what kind of like he even asked you like are you doing like you want to do a uh, goose feathers on your oh. canvas and all that. Oh, and it's like well yeah, dude. Like That's for awesome. me, goose feathers is like one of the best Way canvas to, go. to do. Sorry about the business, but <laughs> but they have good canvases. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like that's. I think like once once you hit that big size medium yeah. thing, you're like, oh crap! Like, yeah. it's it's hard to go back. Yeah, but then you find that to like, oh, okay, you know what? Yeah, actually, like it's more coming. I can finish this in an hour or two. Yeah, yeah, and it's something I want to do quick. Yeah, like it's always going back. To, like just going back to the basic. Like, For sure, because I, I <clears> get that question. I was like, why well, you only do black and white or like simple colors? <coughs> Like after college, you're broke. <laughs> yeah, especially if you pay out of pocket. Oh yeah. yeah. For sure. So like at college, you get all these pains, and it's like it just becomes to like, I have a marker, I have pants, they're gonna cost me probably like what? Yeah. If anything, I spent twenty bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On good pants, if you're me getting that point zero zero five ink. Yeah. Point blade uh pants, shit. Man, I was yeah. happy. I'll do drawings the size of my phone screen or smaller yeah and that's cool man i like i like small stuff that i mean i don't do small stuff but i like the idea of it because like i don't do small stuff <laughs> i started because of, i started shaking so yeah. stippling like i said like i can do i used to do those big ones and will probably take me like 20 hours mm -hmm. and now i do the same for a small one because then i start shaking yeah and it's just like i'll stop because it's like well it's a small piece so mm -hmm. if i mess up it's gonna it can ruin the whole thing yeah yeah so yeah so i'll do uh, probably a six by five inch will take me 10 hours yeah which wow it'll take me an hour Equally, that's crazy but it's because i'll start shaking and i'll stop yeah and it's not a, a 10 hours straight but i'll oh, stop okay i'll stop and then take, like, go come back, back to, to it, it once i stop shaking do oh yeah piece again or did, so i will focus on just like spots on it. yeah yeah I don't know, like the mural thing really appeals to me because yeah, a it's it's a huge scale, right? But also because it's such a permanent thing, like it's like on the contract. Well, yeah, 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 you're right. But like something that's a lot more. I mean, yeah, like I don't know, just it has a bigger impact, I Maybe guess. Visible, in my more mind. visible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it makes people actually stop. Yeah, yeah I think exactly. That's, that's the beat about it because you see a mural and you're like, wait, what? Like, yeah. You, you even go back on the street on your car and be like, mm. yeah, uh -huh. park and go look for it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly so that's yeah. always like the best thing on the mirrors i think yeah mm -hmm. you have to stop this again because yeah where were you talking about you guys oh, we're talking about murals, murals. We're talking about murals. you were warning us about murals the dangers it's, of murals it's like i said it's it's a drug that you don't want <laughs> it's a drug you don't you want at first but then <laughs> you don't really need it because <laughs> then it fucks you up mentally yeah <laughs> but like it's like i was telling you before before we recording it's like it just becomes a thing that you get burned out on yeah. the first one 
Especially the first one because you're not used to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're doing an indoor, it's not that bad. But once you start doing outdoor, it's totally different. Yeah. It's just like, it's like I said, you're working at least from 20 hours to 100 Mm -hmm. or 200. That's a lot of hours. But it's just uh, because it's such a large scale. Yeah. And then you that the thing that I did enjoy is that they force you to like be there, like you had to like be there to finish that section. Yeah, yeah. finish just the outline for a whole day or the mm-hmm. night. Yeah, and it's weather is a lot of problem, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially here because we're hot as balls. <laughs> like, and if the wall is not covered, you don't have like, like you're gonna get a tan. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. No, for or sure. Or when you do it in the winter, that we if you do it in that week that we're like super cold. Yeah, you're just like I can't move my hands. Yeah, and like you go even slower. Yeah, so just like oh, <laughs> yeah. so you you honestly depend a lot of uh, well now with social media like it says it just helps you out because you'll see it's like oh this guy's there like I'm gonna go take him something. Yeah, yeah. So I'll take you food or I'll text someone and it's like oh I know what they're doing. I'm like are you okay? You need help? Like you want me to like help you out on a spot? Yeah, and you you get to meet a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a good beauty about it. Yeah, if they're willing to like be helpful and not be dicks about like you already have a plan. Yeah. yeah. It's not that there might be, but like they're gonna try to do it their style. Yeah, which is always gonna be a fight, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. collaborating, you kind of have that problem at first. Yeah, but yeah, you'll 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 grow more and you meet more creators just because they'll be like, hey, what if you do this? What can I help you on this? Yeah, and it's that's the beauty part, but it burns you out a little bit. Okay, it's don't try to do one mural after another yeah that's Take good your, i was already i was trying to line them up already I was like, yeah, yeah i was you already can, thinking you can do okay it, you can do it but then it's gonna really burn you out like yeah. you're gonna you just want to take a a year of not doing shit bro or like months of just not like i'm gonna focus just you have photography you can do that or you want to go back to writing after that yeah which yeah. is good not bad mm-hmm. but then it's like you go back to painting and you're like oh fuck, i'm rusty yeah yeah and i think mm-hmm. that's like i say when i bought my ipad that's a curse iPad, it's like so good at work on it, just how it recreates textures and everything. Yeah. But then start drawing on paper again, and I'm just trying to zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't work here. Yeah. But yeah, like you see, like in you feel rusty. Like I've been going back to painting and kind of feel a little rusty mm-hmm. with the techniques. But I'm a my specialty is dry brush. Yeah. So a lot of people hate it because. Mm-hmm once you you finish a painting you have to throw away your brush yeah because i never use it ever <clears throat> yeah so it's just something that i use especially because i'm really clean on other stuff like uh-huh. doing dry brush it was like how you get that clean line it's like years of practice it's like it sucks yeah, like, yeah. Wow. I went, like i spent too much money i spent a lot of money on brushes but i know which ones i want yeah like i just go and order them or if i go to michael's or hobby lobby like i know the brand i know the style of the brush already yeah and i know it's gonna last me a painting or half a painting it's like yeah. all white three of those yeah so i can finish like detail lines yeah mm-hmm. wow well good that's good good feedback uh, that's, that's uh, definitely you're gonna, good you're to gonna know. find a brush when you use your mural that it's gonna be your perfect brush yeah mm-hmm. like i have this tiny brush like it doesn't have a hand like the handle is an inch long yeah but that's like every time i want to do like a perfect like line like that's detail yeah that's my brush that's the one yeah like i clean it i had it for i think i had it for five years now yeah and it's just like same one yeah and it's yeah. the same one like it's actually holding my tape but yeah by different layers oh, of yeah. tape yeah, now, like, the handle gets a little loose and it gets yeah it has a bunch of tape like it's thick now <laughs> damn that's crazy man but everyone's like it doesn't have a handle it's like well it's perfect whatever it's like, still do it yeah i just yeah, actually just throwing my hand <laughs> that's what it is <laughs> uh Oh, that's good good to know man for sure i was about to jump head first into this and I'm like, like, yes. <laughs> yeah i can do all the oh, shit. shit i yeah. can't do all of them <laughs> but uh, i think like if you guys are doing the indoor first right you said no we did well we'll probably do an outdoor one first. i already did an indoor one but oh, I, haven't yeah. done, I haven't done an outdoor one yeah an outdoor mm-hmm. yeah, yeah just, it's probably a different beast yes remember wear your hat some black yeah right on right a lot on. of a lot of coffee yeah. energy drinks uh-huh. perfect perfect yeah perfect. I'm all about that. Need. <laughs> <laughs> and food maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe water you know. water yeah no, gotta keep yourself i'm gonna get a camelback <laughs> that's what i'm gonna do I'm gonna have that ready <laughs> and every single moment a camelback so we like yeah keep it right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i always like have growlers for the water or the just metal ca- like i have a, i used to take coolers yeah mm, yeah with it oh nice but in an hour they will go out yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think be water already yeah, you're just like, oh, should I actually drink all this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. All right, so 
before I guess we kind of close out here, is there anything you guys want to shout out your Instagrams, uh, any of your coming upcoming right. projects, websites, anything you guys want to put out there so people so people can be sure to go and check you guys out anyway yeah well first i want to shout you guys out for for being for being badass for sure for being cool dudes for being real cool dudes right number one (laughs) we went to school for this occasionally we are yeah so thank you guys thank you old sheepdog (laughs) i mean yeah it's been great um my everything is nico antuna a-n-t-u-n-a that's my website that's everything so that's where to find my stuff yeah, uh, for me, as far as like finding me on social media, it's Dilution Art, um, and mostly just Instagram. But uh, yeah, no, thank you guys for hosting us today. Yeah, and thank you, Vitola's old cheap dog. But also, just thank you to everybody who's listening. Like, and thanks to local artists. Like, it's it's good to be a part of the scene. It's and keep creating. Yeah, if you made it this far, you're badass. <laughs> <laughs> you're still here. You're still here. You're probably already like five years deep. Yeah. And uh, thank you. <laughs> Better be an old sheepdog. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> love those guys. <laughs> and uh, I guess like uh, always, thank you, old sheepdog. Like I said, go get a growler from old sheepdog. Go yeah. get this growler. Get I think they have a couple uh, left. I think they have five left of uh, Nico and Ileana's growler, which is this one that you guys have been seeing. I'll put a picture so that you can actually see it cleaner. Um, <laughs> Go to Cheap Dog, look at 3900 Rosa Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79905. And then, you know what? Bring the growler over here. Go to Vitalis, uh, look at 216 North West Franklin. West Franklin. Sorry, I was going to say North. Sorry. West Franklin, El Paso, Texas, 79901. And have a good smoke. Have a good beer. Talk to people. Bring your friends. Some board games. I don't know. Food. <laughs> <laughs> and draw. Come and draw. Come draw. Come and draw. Come and draw. Visit your local spots, like always, and bring them over here, too. Like, bring your friends. Have a good time. Have a good smoke. Have a good beer. Keep it local, guys. Stay classy. <laughs> Stay classy. And, yeah, thank you again to Nico and Eliana for joining us today. And um, remember, guys, please like, comment, subscribe on all our videos. Check us out for future content. If you want to be in the show. And if you want to be in the show, <laughs> if there's anybody that you think we need to talk to, be sure to let us know. Re- reach out to us. We're always willing to talk to anybody who has something that they want to promote. doesn't matter what it is. Well, no, it doesn't matter what That's it is. Only fans. Uh, don't forget to support Caesar's only fans. <laughs> Literally me just talking to his fans. So it's all it is. Like there's two videos only. <laughs> They're pretty sad. Yeah, pretty sad videos. They're five actually. hours long. So <laughs> <laughs> you have a free. <laughs> but oh, yeah, if you guys want to come and maybe hopefully I get to work with one of you guys or with you guys together, I want to see that. Not just it's actually just taking the moment and I was gonna talk to you later about this, but if I ever can. Help you guys out. Let me know. Hell yeah, man. Thank you, man. That'll be great. Thank you. Appreciate that. But with that, we'll see you guys next time. All right. Stay hard. Stay hard. (laughs)